Hi, my name is Dave Crotto with Sonia.com. I'm here in southern New Hampshire looking at a retaining wall. So let's go take a look at it. Here we have a retaining wall. The, it starts at, you know, six inches and it goes to maybe about four to five feet over here. The wall was constructed with New England flat field stone. We have aged field stone. The wall construction was done approximately 12 years ago. And the moss and the liking have, you know, grown more vigorous in this environment. And it's quite beautiful. This wall, now we're doing some additional landscaping on the other side of the driveway. And we want to match the stone to the scale of the wall. So this stone is some larger, thicker capstones as well as building stones. So let's take a look at the other wall that we're going to be building and decide what type of stone we want to use over here. Okay, we have this existing wall, but on the other side of the driveway, we're building a new wall. So we want to incorporate the same look as the other side of the driveway. What we started here is we've got stakes and strings, the location of the wall, the finished height of the wall. We've got some base started over here. We've used some of the local stone from the site as the base stones. Once the driveway is in, some of these base stones are going to appear about half the size that you're seeing right now. Okay, here I've laid out a few capstones that will be going into the wall and I always leave the capstones out as soon as I come across a stone that could potentially be used as a cap I save it because few stones in the stones that you buy are usable for cap and then my next grouping of stones right here are the building stones so these are the stones that you'll see in the face of the wall and so they have a decent face and they're flat and so they're easy to build with. The stones behind the wall that I've kind of thrown back there will eventually get used for the back of the wall. So you want to hand pack in the back stones and place those in and then put some crushed stone in between that. We built the wall up, you know, a good two feet on average in some places as close to three tapering down to about a foot on both ends. This is a traditional retaining wall. We've dug away the soil, set the base stones, worked up with the building stones, and then capped. Behind the cap, we put the crushed stone or, you know, a pea stone behind it, and then soil, and then bark mulch. It's important for the height of the soil behind the wall be slightly higher than the actual wall. Let's go take a look at the wall on the back of the property behind the porch and let's see what we've got started over there. Okay here I am in the backyard and what I have here is a stone wall that is based. I've got granite steps that are going to be going in these two locations. I've got a straight wall with, I put a large, you know, stone that will function as a capstone. But I also want to look too that we placed the pallets, this is some thin wall stone, close to the proximity of where the wall is being built. So we can offload the pallet, the stones are right there for us to build. And then this pallet over here is just a regular wall stone. So these are thicker, chunkier stones that will get used along the base and in the middle. And if there are any capstones, we're going to save those out. What I've started to do over here is I've established the corner. It's important to weave the corner. So you have this stone traveling that direction and this travel one is back and forth. So this weaving is important. You still want to create batter on the wall. Batter is where the wall is leaning back into the embankment. 
and then in this case I'm creating a straight line. We've ended the wall with a large stone. There was a little void, so we used some small stones to fill in that void. But that last stone is set at cap height. So once you see the rest of this cap tied in, that will blend into the wall very nicely. And that's it.